Long, you load All right, let's see what we got in the mail today. Uh, bills. End of the month bills. You know how it is. Waiting for the uh, paycheck to come in. We got the end of the month bills. Okay, we got that. Let's see what this is. Wow. Okay, so we got to pay that. And we still got date night tonight. We got to cover the date night dinner. Well, you know. Why don't we go see what we got in the fridge and let's have a great date night dinner with whatever we got in the fridge. Let's figure it out. All right, it's date night. Uh, I got to make something for my spouse, something that's really good. Um, but as you saw, it's the end of the month and, and uh, you know, haven't gotten paid yet. So um, first of all, as always, welcome to Cooking with Michael. I'm going to go ahead and get started and put on my apron and let's see what we can do to uh, have a great date night dinner. How many of you out there uh, get paid uh, monthly or maybe bi-weekly and you get to the point where you're at the end of that check and there's really not a whole lot left? Well, that's most of us. So, you know, sometimes you, you can't go shopping and prepare for a great date night dinner. So you have to kind of figure out what you have in the kitchen. Uh, and that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to figure out what we have in the kitchen. So let's take a look and uh, find out what we got. Let's make something. So this one is uh, completely different. Totally unplanned and uh, let's just see what we come up with. So I'm going to go over here to the fridge and see. Oh, I got an idea. Oh, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> we got our Pinot Grigio. Can we just use this for, for date night dinner? Just have a bunch of Pinot Grigio and see what happens? Now nah, we'll make food too. Uh, so we'll get that. Let's see. I got a great idea though. Let's see. We've got, um, do we have? We do. We've got... We've got biscuits, canned biscuits, that's good. Um, let's see what else we've got. Um, hmm. This still good. We got celery. Yeah, we got ooh, we got two things of celery. Not sure why, but we got some celery. Uh, we have carrots. Oh! If you watched my last week's episode, uh, you saw I used the the uh, garlic last week, but I found another one. I've got a whole another one. I knew I had one. I thought I did. Let's see what else I got. Let's see. Ooh, okay, this is good. So, I have to say thanks to Montgomery County Schools because they keep sending my kids home with uh, lunches and, and stuff like that, and they don't eat the carrots, but I can cut these up and make some carrots, or make that in there. Uh, let's see what else. I think I have, I do. I've got some frozen chicken breasts. All right, so let's do some frozen chicken breasts. Um, what else do I have? Do I have, let's see, um, no, ooh, 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 ooh. All right, I've got uh, some chicken broth, and let's see, do I have, I do. I have tapioca flour from a previous episode. Again, thanks for watching. If you know which one I use, I got tapioca flour. Um, I think that's pretty much good. So what we can do is we can make a great chicken pot pie. Uh, some vegetables, some garlic. Um, I don't know, it's probably a vegetable. Anyway, uh, some yeah, broth uh, with the biscuits and chicken and what have you, and the tapioca flour to make it a little thicker. So um, that's kind of our ingredients. You can see. Um, so we're gonna try and put this together, and we're gonna make uh, we're gonna make chicken pot pie with uh, the leftovers that I've had in my fridge. So I'm gonna open up the Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. I will make a great date night dinner with what you've got in your uh, in your kitchen. So be right back. All right, we're back. Uh, first things first, I always have to, I'm going to go ahead and open up the Pinot Grigio. Um, I have to say thank you to Andrew Chapel Beer and Wine, um, because if anything, at least we have our Pinot Grigio, and uh, he always makes sure we're taking care of the Pinot Grigio. So thank you, Andrew. Always a pleasure, and uh, we really enjoy it, and really appreciate you. Uh, always appreciate uh, you helping us out with this. So, um... I pulled the ingredients out, I, just real quick, I did pull a tapioca flour out, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but you can use regular flour if you have that. I just have a tapioca flour from, um, I used it for a couple of our episodes, I believe, uh, how it's a thickening agent, so um, it'll work really nice with this. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's get out our cutting board. And you know what, we'll first do, what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead, let me get this stuff off the stove because... Um, I don't want to, you know, set everything on fire. We're going to cut up some of these vegetables and uh, 
get ready to cook those. So, uh, but we're gonna turn, we're gonna set our oven. We're gonna cook the biscuits first. And, and if you read the can on the biscuits, it says place oven 350 degrees for a nonstick cookie sheet, which is what we're gonna use. Um, and 11 to 15 minutes. I'm only gonna cook them halfway. Uh, when you make the, the, the chicken pot pie stuff, the, the chicken part of it, which is the chicken and the the, the broth and the, the garlic, and actually we salt and pepper, I'll have, I know I have salt and pepper on here, um, but we make all that stuff together. Um, you'll cook it for about five, 10 minutes after that, and that'll finish up the biscuits. If you don't cook it, uh, the biscuits will actually be kind of mushy underneath. Um, so we're gonna cook these ahead of time. So we'll go ahead and we'll set the, uh, the, the we'll go ahead and set the timer uh, for 375, get those started. Make sure there's nothing in here. Oh, by the way, if you watched my spuds last week, thank you so much. Um, but they came, uh, they came, and they fixed my stove this week, um, and warranty paid for it. So end of the month money woes doesn't matter because warranty paid for it. Yes, gotta love those warranties. So if you're out buying a car, no, never mind. Um, anyway, so warranty paid for it, so we're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and set this up. So we're gonna do 365 and start that. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take out some of the celery. Um, if the celery is a little bit old and it's kind of brown, we'll just kind of cut around it. You can see it's a little bit brown. Um, so we'll just cut around. Let me get the, my knife out of here. So we'll cut the ends off, cut those there. Um, cut the ends off here. Again, this is, I'm not sure how long it's been in my fridge, but still looks pretty good. So we're just going to just cut this up. I don't know when the last time I had celery was, but as long as it's not moldy and you cut off the brown spots, how bad could it be? I guess we'll find out. All right. So again, we look at that. So we're going to cut off the ends of this. Actually, okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and take out the carrots. Again, thanks to Montgomery County Schools as uh, I got some more here. Take that. Thanks to Montgomery County Schools as they uh, keep sending this stuff home, and my kids don't like carrots, so I will definitely use them. I want to make sure, by the way, we are chopping. If you're drinking Pinot Grigio, which you know I am. Um, be careful, don't cut your finger off. It worked fine. I mean, I haven't had that problem. Oh, wait. Sorry, just kidding. All right. Back to chopping. All right, so we're going to take this and put this aside for right now. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, biscuits halfway. Remember, we're only going to cook them halfway. The reason being is you don't want them fully cooked because they will fully cook when you're cooking the all together, when they're on top of the uh, mixture of chicken and, and vegetables and spices and, and broth and whatnot. Uh, but if you don't cook them at least halfway, they will be doughy on the bottom. Uh, so make sure you do it that way. So we're gonna go ahead and get out the uh, cookie sheet. All right, there's a cookie sheet. Go ahead and open these puppies up here. So we're just gonna put these out here. Raw, put them in for about five minutes. So we will set the timer for five minutes. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to cook the carrots and the celery. Uh, we got my cast iron skillet and we're going to cook them till they're soft. Uh, so when they go in, that's a lot easier in the casserole dish. All right, so we got the skillet. Again, thank you to Andrew Chapel Beer and Wine who provided us with these skillets. I love these things. So, go ahead and put that down. What I'm going to do, let me get some butter, actually. So I'm going to turn this on, let's put it on medium, and let's put the butter in there. And the butter melts. Now, when the butter melts, what I'll do is I'll put the carrots and the celery in there and a little bit of the garlic. Uh, we'll cook that all up, okay? And then, when, I'm, well, that's, uh, when that's done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a uh, bowl, and I'm going to take uh, about two cups of the broth, and a little bit of tapioca flour, and I'm gonna mix it all together, okay? So the, the broth is a little, uh, be a little bit creamier. Um, if we had cream of chicken soup, that would be great. Um, flour, regular flour works also. Just be careful not to overuse it. Same thing with tapioca flour, you don't wanna overuse it because you don't want it to be real, almost hard. You want it to be a little bit thick like gravy, but still edible. And the chicken, we gotta cook the chicken. Um, ah, you know what we'll do? 
is I'm going to take out, I got an idea. So we're going to take out, I'm going to take out, dang, why are frozen chicken breasts so much bigger? Stripper chicken breasts? Anyway, let's take out, um, let's take out two of those. They'll look like this, you can see. Uh, I'm going to put them in the microwave a little bit just to thaw them a little bit. Um, and then we'll cook them with the vegetables and uh, so they're nice and cooked so you don't have to worry about whether or not they're overcooked in the oven. So let me go ahead and put this in the, in the microwave. Um, let's do defrost. Where the hell is defrost? Uh, defrost. All right, so let's do, looks like it's a pound and a half. Who knows? We'll find out. Keep an eye on it. Don't let it cook in the microwave. So drink your Pinot Grigio. But yeah, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll cook the uh, carrots and celery, a little bit of the garlic powder, and the chicken all in the skillet. So it's all nice and cooked. Uh, the vegetables take a little longer than the chicken, obviously, but we'll make it so it's nice and cooked. Well, obviously, we're going to dice up the chicken, too. So uh, we'll put it all in there. Uh, when it's all cooked, we'll put it in the mixture of the uh, broth and the tapioca flour, which we'll make in a moment, and uh, we'll go from there. So... Uh, all right, just real quick, um, we, the timer did go off. We took the biscuits out. Uh, let me show you what they look like. You can see they are still basically raw, but they're a little bigger than what they were. Bigger is better. Um, sorry. Anyway, uh, so they're bigger than what they were, so they're about halfway cooked, and we're going to take those and put those on top after we've done everything else. So the chicken is still uh, defrosting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the chicken up on the cutting board uh, and then put it all on here as well. So um, we'll be right back. All right, so the chicken, uh, let's take the chicken. It's not quite uh, defrosted completely, but that's okay. I mean, you want to be careful not to cook it all the way through because you want it to cook in the uh, skillet. So um, it'll look a little bit like this. It's still frozen. Um, still frozen. And we're going to cut up the chicken into cubes. Uh, and then we're going to we're put that in the bowl. Let me get a bowl for that. All right, so we're going to get a bowl for We're going to put it in a bowl, so Pinot Grigio. All right, so you can see there's the chicken. So we're just going to basically cut this up into cubes so we can cut it, or we can so we can cook it. We have had more Pinot Grigio than I expected, or than I thought. So this is what the chicken looks like. You can see it's basically just cubed, okay? So, now what we're gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and get our skillet ready. Put it down there, okay? You can see the butter is melted. It's gotta heat up a little more. And while we're waiting for that to, to cook, um, Karen, I know last week you really missed out, but uh, this is flounder. Hi. This is flounder. Okay. Karen, that was for you because I know last week with no oven and we had to do a different take, you didn't get to see a cat, so I got a cat for you. All right. Now, you can see it's starting to, the butter starting to bubble, so what we're going to do is we're going to take first our carrots and celery mix. You can hear it start to sizzle. We're going to cook these until they are soft. Okay. Put that in the sink. This will take probably about five to eight minutes before these are completely soft. And then when they are soft, we're going to take the chicken and we'll put that in there as well. Get them nice and cooked. So while we're letting these cook, and again, you don't want to, you don't want to walk away from, you want to keep stirring for the most part. But what we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and open up the broth and we're going to make that. We're going to add the tapioca flour. And of course, uh, right before we put it all together, we'll add the minced garlic in there and cook the minced garlic in the skillet as well. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the broth. I opened the can a little bit and we're basically just going to, you can see we're going to pour about two cups of broth into the measuring cup, okay? And the best way to check measuring is put on a level surface, put on a level surface, look at it, go in there. My wife pointed that out to me today, even though I knew that. Don't tell her I knew that. Anyway, 
So we're going to take that and then we're going to pour it right into, uh, basically I'm going to pour it into a bowl here, okay? Put that aside for right now. Uh, let's take, actually let's stir this up a little more. Get that more stirred in there. And again, you want these to be cooked and soft. Uh, you really don't want to have your uh, chicken pot pie any crunchy, okay? So if it takes a little longer than five to ten minutes, um, so be it. It takes a little longer. That's okay. All right. So, and what I'm going to do also is I'm going to take I'm going to take uh, maybe about a half a tablespoon of garlic. Put that in there, okay? What the hell? Put a little more in there. Okay. While it's doing that, I'm going to take some of the tapioca flour and. All right, so we're gonna take our tapioca flour. We're gonna take, uh, let's say, I don't know. Uh, let's do four heaping teaspoons. I don't know. Put enough in there and make it look, make it thick. It's certainly more than heaping, but you know it is what it is. Let's see how that works out. Worst case scenario, it's a little thick. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to... Hi, Phoebe. Phoebe's in here. We're going to whisk this together. Whisk it all up. Um, it does kind of start to thicken almost right away, so you want to try and, and get it in there as quickly... or stir it up as quickly as possible, okay? Because what you don't want to do is have it uh, get on the bottom, which is what exactly is happening right now. Uh, I think it took a little too long. So, and we'll put this aside for right now. Okay, and note while you're doing this again, this is like I said, completely unscripted. So I really don't have much of a recipe for this. I'm just kind of shooting from the hip. Um, if you need more uh, broth uh, because you don't have enough, um, add more. Just add more tapioca flour or regular flour or whatever you're doing, thicken it up a little bit uh, to make it uh, to to have enough broth so you have a nice uh, uh, pot pie. Now what you have to realize is you don't want it to be chicken soup either. Um, basically the pot pie is going to be kind of a creamy mixture with the vegetables, the chicken, that kind of thing. So, and keep in mind, if it does not work out well, fuck it, you have Pinot Grigio, just keep drinking until she forgets it sucks. That's Phoebe telling you what you thought, what she thinks. Phoebe! Alright, alright, so let's take a look at this. It's uh, it's coming along pretty good. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and put the chicken in there as well. Get that chicken nice and, and cooked. Because again, it's none of the, all this is going to do really in the in the oven is solidify and finish baking the biscuits on top. So we're going to make sure this mixture is pretty well cooked here in the skillet. Okay, so we're going to keep stirring it again. Keep stirring so it doesn't burn. Uh, let it sit for a minute. And then go back to stirring again so it doesn't burn. All right. While it's cooking, I'm going to reach up. I'm going to take uh, some salt. And just put some salt in there. Not a lot. Again, know your audience. We always talk about that. Some pepper. Okay. Didn't show the ingredients because I just thought about it now. Why not? And let's get some onion powder too. Onion powder. Uh, put some onion powder in there as well, just a little bit. Not a lot, just enough to uh, add some taste to it. And we'll go back to stirring it. Stir it up. You can see the chicken is coming along nicely. It's not quite done yet. So we're going to keep stirring and keep letting it cook until everything is soft and fully done. So uh, we'll be right back. All right, so our mixture is just about done. Um, well, really, over the last couple minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to stir up the broth and the tapioca flour again. It does settle, so we want to get it back to the creamy, milky-looking, thin, milky-looking that it was. Because, like I said, that tapioca flour will actually settle. So, get it back to there. So, what we're going to do now is, now that's done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our corning ward dish. And, as you can see, we drain some of the liquid out. And we're basically just going to, and uh, fuck that pan's hot, even with the, uh, even with the, the rubber thing on it. So we're going to go ahead and just put that right into there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take the broth and tapioca flour mixture I made, pour that in there. Okay. 
and it kind of looks like that. All right, put that inside there. Right? And then I'm gonna take my half made biscuits. And we're just going to line the biscuits up, okay, on top. All right, so we're gonna line those on top. Now, it'll look like that, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put this in the oven, and I'm going to cook for about 10 minutes. What you want to have happen when it comes out, it, you know, the liquid is going to be somewhat gone. Uh, the biscuits will be done. Okay, when the biscuits are done. The liquid is somewhat gone. It's going to be some in there. Then it's basically done. When that's it, we'll scoop some out into a bowl or a plate or whatever. Um, I haven't figured that part out yet. All right, so it's the time for 10 minutes. We'll see what it's like when it comes back. Uh, we're going to stop right here. And I'm going to drink some Pinot Grigio because, as I always say, while it's cooking, what the heck else am I going to do? And uh, when it's done, we'll take it out, try it. And one of two things is going to happen. Either it's going to be fantastic or Pinot Grigio is our dinner for tonight. So either way, we'll be right back show you what it looks like. All right. So it's done. Let's pull it out, see what it looks like. Uh, well, I think it's done. We're going to pull it out and see what it looks like. All right, so I'll show you that. So it's not quite done, actually. So we're going to put it back in for another couple minutes uh, and see what it's, it's – get these fully brown on top, okay? Uh, and then we'll uh, scoop it out and try and go from there. So I'm going to put this back in. We'll probably put it in for, let's say, about five more minutes, and then we'll go from there. All right, so uh, it looks like it's almost done, so we're going to try it again. All right, so this is what it looks like. You can see they're a little more brown, so that's good. So we'll go ahead and call this one done. We turn off the uh, stove, and we're going to basically just scoop out. Uh, it wasn't as thick as I had hoped it would be, but scoop out... Uh, some of the chicken and the vegetables and you know, the biscuit and see what happens. We're going to go ahead and this is what it looks like when it's uh, done. Before I do this, I might need some Pinot Grigio because if it sucks, I'm going to need a lot of Pinot Grigio because I have to explain to my loved one, my date night, my spouse, my wife who spent the entire time putting the kids to bed while I was making this, um, that I fucked up dinner and we're going to DoorDash. So... Let's see what happens. We got a fork. And typically, as I've said before, I always say, oh, this is great, even when it sucks. Um, I've only had that happen once, by the way. But I will tell you honestly if this is not very good. So let me go ahead and uh, take some of this out here. So not bad. Actually, not bad at all. Actually, I'm a little surprised. Actually, that's really good. I'm, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm pleasantly surprised. I was a little nervous how this is going to turn out because um, I've never really done this before. I was just kind of, like I said, shooting from the hip. So, one more bite. So, look, that's hot. Okay, um, so anyway, that's it. Again, I, I, and as I've said before, we, you know, a lot of us uh, live paycheck to paycheck, and sometimes we, we can't prepare for that special date night. Um, we try and have date night. As you know, we have date night in my house every Saturday night uh, where we spend time, we catch up, because uh, I work a lot. She's always with the kids, so she's working with the kids, um, and we never really get the chance to catch up. When I get home from work, she's exhausted and she's out, um, or I'm exhausted and I'm out, so... You know, it, it's good to have these nights, and, and that's what this is all about. But sometimes, you know, you just don't have the money to go out and, and buy fish and buy steak and buy whatever else and, and put it all together. So you have to kind of forage with what you have. And that's what we did here, Pinot Grigio. So we, that's what we did here. We foraged, and we put together something pretty good, actually. I'm actually fairly impressed. So try it. See what you think. Um, if you have different options... Um, different ways of doing it, let me know. Um, I have heard from many of you that it is uh, having difficulties putting pictures of the food that you're making 
up on uh, our YouTube channel, so on the comment section. So just comment this week. We will be picking the winner this week for the comments. Um, we haven't narrowed down, by the way, but uh, if you put something up there and it's really good, um, you could uh, bump everybody and win some swag from Cooking with Michael. So, again, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you try it. And as always, uh, share it with people you know. Uh, watch it, comment, like it, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, and as always, the more uh, subscriptions and the more shares, the more comments, the more watching, the more viewing, the more likes, all that kind of stuff. It helps show up on other people's feeds and we get more people watching, which is what we're trying to do. So uh, every week we pick up more subscribers. Every week we have more people watching. So thank you so much for watching. We hope you love it. Hope you enjoy the dinner. I hope you have a great, great date night. Uh, drink some Pinot Grigio and uh, we'll see you next week, every Saturday, 8 p.m. on Cooking with Michael. Have a great night, everybody. Good night. On your load 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store.